you stand with us, take your hymn books and join us on page number 16. Page number 16, blessed be the name. And twenty one, love lifted me. I was seeking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, barely deeply stayed within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. Save him, I 
164. 164, we'll sing the first and the last of He Lives. said amen. amen so thankful that jesus lives and I'm, I'm thankful i give testimony this morning that jesus lives in my heart i hope that you can say that as well i hope that there's a time there's been a time in your life where you've trusted jesus as your personal savior and if not i'm praying that today will be that day so good to see you this morning happy mother's day to all of our moms out there and i'm so thankful for a mom and i, I trust that you are as well for a mom that chose life Amen. That's a pretty weak amen from the choir. I don't know about that. Uh, man, uh, I'm thankful for a mom that chose life. And you know what? Uh, and uh, there's no substitute for mom in our life. Think about this. Where would you be without mom? We wouldn't, and so moms are pretty incredible people, and so thankful for, for our moms, and uh, trust that you are as well. We're going to be begin our service with a word of prayer, and then following prayer, you can be seated. Let's bow for prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the wonderful day that, that you've given to us. God, we thank you so much for what this day, what we celebrate on this day as we celebrate moms. As we've already given testimony of, God, we're thankful for, for life. We're thankful for moms that have chosen life. And God, I pray that uh, uh, you would give us just a wonderful celebration throughout this day of moms. And God, I know that Mother's Day could be a, a difficult day, a sad day as well, as not everybody has a mom that they can celebrate with. Some have passed away and they've entered into eternity and uh, there's some heartbreak and some heartache there because mom's not around. God, I know that uh, uh, there are some moms that uh, uh, were not the example of a godly mom, and, uh, uh, and the thought of Mother's Day brings about some, some hurt and some pain for that reason as well. God, I pray that you grant comfort uh, to these individuals. And then, God, uh, I know there are some that can celebrate this morning the fact that they had a mom that loved you and uh, worshipped you, and uh, God, uh, they celebrate today fact and God we're just so thankful uh, for moms we're thankful for life God we're thankful for you loving us and as we sang just a moment ago we're thankful that we serve a risen Savior and God we're thankful that that Savior resides in our hearts it's my prayer this morning that as we sing and as we uh, are challenged from your word that if there's an individual here that does not know you as your Savior uh, God may they be introduced to your love may they be introduced to your son the only way of salvation and may today be their day of salvation. God, I pray that you speak to our hearts in many different ways as well as we hear your message taught. And may God, may our hearts be open to the preaching of your word. We love you. Bless the choirs they sing. Be with the remainder of our worship this morning as well. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. You may be seated. Would you stand with us, take your hymn books, turn to page 329, 329, Saved by the Blood.
Calvary Baptist Church and worshiping with us this morning. Our men are coming. We want to take just a minute and welcome any guests that we might have with us today. And so if this is your first time here, first time in a long time, thank you for joining us. Lift your hand if you would, nice and high. Our men will get a connection card to you. Uh, and we ask if you would to fill that out. Put that in the offering plate when it comes by at the end of the service. We thank you so much uh, for visiting with us on this wonderful Mother's Day Sunday. Couldn't ask for a beautiful, a more beautiful day outside. Beautiful weather outside and so excited about that. Thank you, Mom, so much for being in attendance this morning. We're going to, in a minute, we're going to greet one another. But I'm going to ask you to take a seat for a second. And uh, we've got some gifts we'd like to give away to some mothers that are here today. I'm going to ask if my wife would, uh, would make her way down here. We'll pass out some of these gifts. We want to recognize our moms this morning. So let's do this as we get started. Uh, if you are a mom, uh, would you stand up so we may recognize you today? And uh, look at, uh, we've got, sorry, I just had you be seated. I should have just had everybody else be seated except moms. And so let's give all of our moms here a good round of applause. And I'm so thankful for them. And uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully you got breakfast in bed and uh, you woke up to a clean house and uh, laundry was all done. The grass was mowed out front. Anybody uh, ha have that experience? Okay, guys, we've got to get our act together, okay? we got to get together. Ladies, you may be seated. Thank you so much. And uh, we're going to recognize uh, uh, some of our moms that are here today. And don't be offended uh, by, by the age thing and all that kind of stuff. Just wear it proudly. We'll ask a couple of questions. We want to give prizes to those that are here today. So let's look, first of all, uh, to be here today. Uh, do we have, let's see who has traveled the farthest to be here on this Mother's Day, okay? Uh, and we'll not, we won't make you stand up, just so you can raise your hand. If you are, if you came from outside the realm of grayling, lift your hand nice and high. Okay, so there's the realm. Isn't that a good word? Who said realm? Okay, a few of us, all right? Uh, put your hand down. Uh, uh, let's see this. If you traveled uh, 30, at least 30 miles or more, to get here to church today. Now, I'm not saying the entirety of your life, and it's led you to this point. We're not saying that. This morning or this, or this weekend, you traveled at least 30 miles to get here to church today. Would you lift your hand nice and high? 30 miles. Okay, one, two, two at 30 miles or more. All right, let's see. Uh, roughly how many miles? Uh, something from Petoskey. Petoskey. Like okay, all right, so Petoskey, all right. And then uh, anybody else on this side? I thought, no, then right here. Four and a half hours from Indiana. All right, she beat you. Sorry. So let's uh, let's give this is Jacqueline's mom and dad here. Let's give her a good round of applause. All right, let's let's do another one. Thank you. If you got your Fitbit on, Ingrid, you're going to get a lot of steps in here. Okay, you're going to be all over the place. Should we have the ladies come forward? No, okay, awesome, no, all right, no, that's not happening, okay, uh, let's do another one, uh, let's, uh, let's see here, okay, uh, let's see, the mother that has the most children, okay, the mother that has the most children, any moms have at least one, okay, that better be all moms in here, okay, awesome, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, maybe we better go a little quicker than that, uh, five or more children, lift your hand nice and high, five or more children, one, two, three, four ladies with five or more, uh, let's try uh, six or more children, six or more children, we've got two, two, uh, ladies, you have to arm wrestle for it, no, we won't do that, uh, let's give that to Kim says to give it to, okay, give it to, to Lisa there. So let's give Lisa a good round of applause. They both have six children. But I, I think we ought to be praying that Kim wins this outright maybe next year. Should we be? No. We, seven, eight twins, triplets, I don't know. But uh, uh, so Kim and, Kim and Lisa, bye, Bob, good job there. Good job. Uh, that doesn't sound right. Uh, congratulations. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's uh, let's do um, uh, who has the this is a tough one here the most children at church with them today most children at church with them today okay let's try let's try four who has four children here at church today. 
Okay, that was okay. We got we got got to count them there. That's good. All right. Uh, I'm gonna sit. Kim, all your children are here, so that's six. So let's give Kim a good round of applause. She's got six of her children here today, and so great job there. But Jeremy, I would be going for the all-out most children next year. So that's that's what I'd be shooting for. So uh, let's do this. Uh, how about? Um, Who has the youngest child here today? The youngest child here today. Okay. Uh, we might need verification in the nursery. I don't know. Uh, but let's see. Does anybody have a child that is under one year old? Under one. Okay. Okay. That's enough. That's enough. Okay. Wow. Scarlett wants to be noticed. You will be heard. Okay. Uh, anybody have a child under one? All right, so is that, uh, okay, so we need, we need to do better, church, we need to do better, okay. Uh, let's, uh, we'll move on from that one. Uh, you guys going to have another one, Ben? No, okay, 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 all right, all right, just put, put them on the spot, that's good. Uh, let's, uh, here's, a, here's a tough one to think about, so you have to go back. What's the mom that has been a church member at Calvary Baptist Church the longest? Oh, so we got to go back a little bit, back a little bit. Uh, early 1900s, uh, <laughs> wear it proudly, okay, uh, wear it proudly. Uh, anybody been a church, uh, mom has been a church member here for, let's say, 30 years. We'll start at 30. I think that's good, okay. All right, all right, we got a young lady in the back, very good, uh, 30 years. Uh, how about uh, let's uh, let's increase that by ten? Uh, Forty years. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, all right. This is a fierce battle here. Uh, what's uh, forty-five years? One, two, three, four. Okay, fifty years. One, two. Uh, fifty-five years. All right. Uh, 60 years, and I think we've got one. Jeannie, how many years do you think? Do you remember? You were 13. Okay, okay. All right, you're on your own for the math on that one. Okay, let's give Jeannie a good round of applause there. 13 years old. Great job. Congratulations, Mrs. McDonald, on that. Okay. Uh, I should have been marking these off. I don't know which ones I've done. Okay, let's do this one since we're on the age thing. I'm sorry. Uh, the oldest mom present. The oldest mom present. I uh, know. Uh, uh, 29. 29, okay. I uh, know. Deacons, can I get a, we need a wall here, uh, please. Uh, Let's, uh, let's, uh, maybe we'll, we'll uh, jump ahead a little bit. Uh, let's go to, let's see, 75. Mom's 75, okay? Uh, 80. One, two, three. Uh, let's, uh, 85. All right, let's backtrack then. 84. Mom, that's 84. 83. 82. Marie in the back, 82 years young. Reverse that, it's only 28, so there you go. Let's give that to Marie. Great job there, uh, Marie. Congratulations. Okay, this is a tough one here, and uh, I don't know if we'll get some announcements for this or not. Uh, let's go with the newest mother-to-be. So what does that mean? The one that has the due date that is the furthest out. Okay, for an expected mother. Uh, let's see, anybody have expecting a baby in the next nine months? <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, let's, let's try, uh, that'd be pretty revealing there. Sorry, honey. All right, uh, let's, uh, eight months. Anybody eight months out, seven months out, six months out, five months out? Ben, you guys gotta be getting close. No, okay. <laughs> Uh, four months out, Jacqueline's four months-ish out, going once, twice. Anybody else want to announce anything? 
Okay, awesome. All right, let's uh, let's give uh, the right to good round of applause, Jack, with their newest mother to be. And uh, what uh, due date? When's your due date, Jacqueline? Mid September, boy, girl, twins, girl. Okay. All right, just one girl. Okay, awesome. How many we got? We got two left here. So let's do this. Uh, let's do the most grandchildren. The most grandchildren. We can't forget grandmas here. The most grandchildren. Uh, is it true, moms, is it true that grandchildren are God's reward for not killing your children? Is that true? <laughs> wow. Uh, if your mom's in here, guys, sorry about that one. Uh, wow. Uh, most grandchildren, let's start at uh, maybe uh, 15. 15 grandchildren, moms with 15 grandchildren. Okay, let's do this great and great grandchildren. And if it's a great, great, that's good too. Uh, 15, anybody? Nobody? 20? 25? Okay. Awesome. Uh, let's go back down to 14? 13? 12? Do ones on the way count? <laughs> they count to the Lord. He's given life, so yes. So let's do number 12. Miss Kay, how many you got? Twelve. So let's give uh, let's give uh, Miss Kay and uh, 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 Jacqueline's mom a gift there, and uh, congratulations on twelve there. All right, great job, all of our ladies there. Congratulations to all of you, and uh, we're out of gifts. Otherwise, we'd give more. Uh, let's should we give some to the men? No, 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 we won't do that. All right, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's stand together, and as, uh, as the instrumentals play through verse or two, junior church can be dismissed. Let's walk around, greet one another, uh, and then we'll come back together and sing the rest of Saved by the Blood. Back to our seats, we'll pick up on that last verse of page 329. Save by the blood of the
go ahead and turn to page 148. Page 148, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Amen. So thankful for the Lord's faithfulness uh, to me uh, in my life. I trust that you are as well. Let's go in our Bibles to the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter number 3 this morning. 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Once again, happy Mother's Day to all of our moms that are here. And so thankful that you have joined us to celebrate with us here this morning. Uh, and hopefully you're able to enjoy that steak dinner this afternoon, right? Whoa, that sounds like some sarcastic laughing there, but uh, uh, hopefully you have a wonderful day. I'm so excited about that. In 2 Timothy chapter number 3, I want you to note with me as we get started a verse. Uh, and this will kind of be our launching off point here this morning. But 2 Timothy chapter number 3, and we're going to look at a pretty remarkable uh, young man and uh, really the, what led to him being so remarkable uh, but in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, you, we've got to remember that the Apostle Paul is writing this young man. He's writing Timothy and trying to encourage Timothy. Uh, and we read in verse number 14, 2 Timothy 3 and verse number 14, where the Apostle Paul tells Timothy under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned <coughs> and hast been assured of. And I want you to note this last phrase here knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Verse number 15, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. You see, for Timothy, there was uh, some people, uh, namely a couple of individuals, a couple of ladies that invested their time, invested their effort into training and teaching Timothy the scriptures. We know at the end of verse 14, just kind of want to go back to it for a second, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Timothy's mom and Timothy's grandma, and we'll note this in just a couple of minutes, were very instrumental in bringing Stephen up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And Paul encourages Timothy to simply continue in what he's learned, continue in what he had been taught, 
by his mom and by his grandma. And so we're going to look at, at these two ladies uh, here this morning. Let's bow, ask the Lord for prayer, and then we'll jump right into the scriptures. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much. Uh, for this day once again. Thank you so much for the opportunity we've had to celebrate mothers. We've uh, uh, had a good time and we've uh, uh, honored our moms. We've laughed a little bit. But now, God, I pray that you'd help us to be focused upon your word here this morning. God, I pray that you'd speak to our hearts in the area of salvation and then also in the area of our Christian living. Bless these next few moments. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I think about Mother's Day, I, I, uh, I, I thought of, uh, and uh, I was trying to remember some of the sayings that, uh, that I would hear maybe from my mom or other moms, and, and, I, and I have some of these I want to share with you, maybe recall some of these sayings uh, from your memory bank, and uh, maybe there'll be some, uh, some happy ones. And maybe they'll cause you to remember maybe some not so, not so happy, happy moments. Maybe I don't know. But uh, let's look at just a couple of these things that moms are notorious for. And uh, I'll just kind of put a disclaimer on it. Some of these really just don't make sense, okay? But they come from our mothers, and we love our moms. And so we just accepted them, okay? Now, here was, here's one that always kind of got me. Uh, say, mom, moms would say, <coughs> don't look at me with those eyes. I don't know. I mean, what eyes are you supposed to look at her with? I don't know. But, uh, uh, and then this one, uh, children are to be seen and not heard. That's a difficult one. Uh, uh, this one always worried me growing up. If you keep making that face, it'll freeze that way. Anybody, anybody hear that? See, and how many of you are, man, the, the, what your appearance now, hey, it's true. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, uh, if you, uh, here's another one. If you act like a child, I'll treat you like one. And then this one I, I think is a little crazy. Quiet down. I can't even hear myself think. See, you know it. There you go. Can't even hear myself think. I heard this one a lot. One day you'll thank me. Have you, are you there? Say, wow, thank you, Mom. Uh, uh, and man, or maybe it's more of a not a thank us, but man, I wish I would have uh, so that, now that I could thank Mom. Uh, and then this one was a hard one always. Because I said so, that's why. <laughs> that's right, because I'm Mom. There you go. Uh, here's, here's another one. As long as you're under my roof, you'll live by my rules. That was Mom. God gave you a brain. Use it. If your friends jumped off a bridge, would you? Uh, shut the door. Were you born in a barn? Uh, this, this one, I, this might be, uh, moms and dads both experienced this one. Uh, talking to you is like talking to a brick wall. Uh, maybe you've had that one. Uh, this one, uh, I, I've, I've learned the value of this one. Let's play the quiet game. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, here's, here's, uh, here's one. Uh, I'm not asking, I'm telling. And here's, here's a tough one. When you, have, when you have kids, I hope they're just like you. That's a, that's a tough one there. Here's one. Don't use that tone with me, mister. Stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. How about this one? Uh, don't make me ta turn this car around. Ooh. Ooh, that's a tough one. And then here's one that always boggled my mind. I'm not going to tell you again. Now that one, that one doesn't even make sense. So if I don't obey, you're not going to tell me again? Uh, I mean, uh, that sounds pretty good. You're just giving up, Mom? I mean, that's, that's kind of the way, uh, the way it is there. So uh, just some, some thoughts about Mom and some of the sayings that they have and uh, so thankful for moms that invest to us. Hey, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, the mom's job is never done. Never done. The ladies, you might think, man, my kids, they're, they're growing up. They're graduating high school. Woo, it'd be freedom. Mom's job is never done. 
Uh, and uh, I'm so thankful for moms that have just been faithful. Let's look here at Timothy. I want you to note a mom and a grandma here. Uh, Timothy's mom, Timothy's grandma uh, this morning, and I want you to note the investment that they made in the life of Timothy. And, and uh, let me say this, dads, just because we might be speaking to moms, hey, you're not exempt from the sermon here, okay? So don't fall asleep. Kids, uh, you're in, uh, in on this too, okay? So let's stay awake, okay? All of our young people, stay awake here. Pay attention. There's, there's going to be plenty in here for all of us. You're, you're in 2 Timothy, maybe chapter 3. Jump back over to look at chapter number 1 really quick here, okay? Let's, let's get introduced uh, to uh, Timothy's mom and grandma. 2 Timothy chapter number 1, I want you to note in verse number 5. 2 Timothy chapter number 1 in verse number 5. Paul, once again writing, he says, When I call to remembrance... The unfeigned faith that is in thee. So Paul telling Timothy, when I remember the faith that you have, Timothy, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Uh, and so uh, t Paul telling Timothy, Timothy, uh, uh, hey, uh, verse number four, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears that I may be filled with joy. Hey, I, when I remember you, Timothy, and uh, man, I, I greatly desire to see you. Uh, and man, I'm shedding tears and uh, they're filled with joy because I remember the impact or I remember your faith, and I remember the impact that your mom has made in your life. I remember the impact that your grandma has made in your life. He says, when I call to remember the unfeigned faith. So let me share with you just kind of two thoughts about this faith here this morning. Lois and Eunice, Timothy's mom and grandma, they had a faith that was memorable. A faith that was memorable. We see that Paul, he remembers this faith that Timothy has that is passed down from his mom and from his grandma. Now let me just remind you of this fact. Be thankful this morning. Uh, if you can look back on your life and you have a godly heritage that you can celebrate, a faith that has been passed down, that has been taught to you, maybe by a mom, by a dad, maybe by a grandma and a grandpa, and it's been passed down to you, be thankful for that faith. Listen, not everybody can celebrate a, a heritage like that, a faith like that that's been passed down to them. Uh, but uh, everybody here can be a part of this family of God and have this faith. Uh, Lois and Eunice, they had a memorable faith. It was a very visible faith uh, in front of Timothy, their son uh, and grandson. Uh, Timothy's dad, he was a Greek. He was probably an unsaved man and uh, did not believe in the Lord. And so uh, Lois was kind of uh, uh, by herself here. Uh, I'm sorry, Eunice is kind of by herself and uh, raising uh, up, her, up her son in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And her faith had to be a very visible faith. She was unashamed. These ladies were unashamed of the faith of the gospel and they were willing to impart it into the lives of their children and grandchildren. And let me encourage you moms, have a visible faith. Have a faith that is not just talked about, is not just a, a, a church faith where, hey, we come in on a Sunday morning, hey, this is our faith. Have a faith that is visible to your children, a faith that your children can see. Do your children see <coughs> you opening this book right here and reading it? Do your children see a, a, a mom that is uh, praying for her children and her grandchildren need to have a visible faith Paul said this about the faith of the gospel he said this in Romans chapter 1 he said for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Paul says he's not ashamed. Lois and Eunice, they were not ashamed of their faith, their faith in Jesus Christ. They lived it out for all to see, for Timothy to be able to see. Hey, be willing to live out your faith. Your faith ought not to be just a Sunday morning faith. It needs to be every day. You need to be living it out. But you know what? This faith, it was not just a visible faith. It was an impactful faith. 
You look at verse number 5 once again in 2 Timothy chapter number 1. When I call to remember, it's the unfeigned faith that is in thee. These uh, ladies, they invested their life into Timothy and they uh, passed their faith along and uh, taught Timothy the gospel and it impacted Timothy uh, so very much, so much so that in 2 Timothy chapter number 3, Paul encourages Timothy once again, as we've already read in verse 14, to continue thou in the faith, continue in the faith which uh, thou hast uh, learned and has continued down the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Where did Timothy learn the Scriptures from his mom, from his grandma? Moms, you've got a big job, tremendous job. Don't fail in your motherhood because you're unwilling to teach and train your young person the truths of Scripture. We spend so much of our time focused on, on the things of this life as, you know what, we, we should spend some time teaching and training, or much time teaching and training our young people about, about life and uh, what is to come. But if we've missed teaching and training them uh, the faith of the gospel, we've missed our call as moms, and I'll say this even as dads. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah chapter number one, you don't have to turn there, I'll just read this for you. In Jeremiah chapter number one, in verse number five, God is talking, Jeremiah says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Paul, God telling Jeremiah, hey, I'm the one that has given you life. I am the one that opened your mother's womb. Uh, and uh, before I formed thee in belly, I knew thee. I knew you. Moms, every child that you've had is a gift, is a responsibility. Dads, your children are a gift, a responsibility. Don't miss out on, on, on this uh, uh, godly heritage of you passing that down to your children. Lois and Eunice give us a wonderful example of living by faith and passing down that faith, that teaching, that gospel down to the next generations. One day, Jeannie has been a member here since she was 13. It's incredible. 50 years from now, some of us won't be here. Others will be. Will we be able to say, I was a member? Not that membership saves you or anything like that, but you know what? It's a call to godliness. It's a call to faithfulness. Will we be able to say, yeah, I was, I've been in church. Whew. I've heard people say it this way. Uh, uh, I, I was a drug baby. I was drugged to church every Sunday. I've heard people say that, uh, you know what, I've been in church uh, nine months before I was born. You know what, that's, that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. We parade our kids around to all kinds of different activities. And church is... And our faith is just uh, something that's a matter of convenience. If it's not convenient, uh, uh, you know what, if I'm doing something else, then uh, sorry, church kind of gets the boot, or, or our scripture reading, or our prayer time gets the boot, uh, rather than saying, hey, there's no substitute for the things of God, there's no substitute for living by faith. I want a faith that is visible to my family, to my children, to my grandchildren. I want a faith that impacts their life. I'll be honest with you, as a kid, I spent, I spent hours, my brothers and I, we spent hours shooting basketballs. We spent, and uh, maybe to my detriment, we spent hours playing our video games. How much time do we spend with the Lord? I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm a... 43 years old, I feel like, man, I'm hitting the bottom of the hill. I'm down, you know, I'm over the hill, pff, hit the bottom. You know what, I, I can't play basketball anymore. It hurts for days. 
I can't, tell, I can't play video games anymore. The systems they have now, I can't even, my eyes cannot, cannot keep up with what is going on. What are we investing in? What, what are we pushing our young people towards? Are we pushing them towards a relationship with Jesus Christ? Are we showing them how to walk by faith and not by sight? I've shared this with you. When I was in California, we, we were out there for 14 years. All of our kids were born in California. That's what's wrong with them, by the way. They were born in California. <laughs> we're born in California, and, and uh, as, uh, as the kids grew up, there was a, there was a gentleman on, on staff at the school there, and he was a huge Ohio State fan. And he influenced my son in a negative way. And I'm not going to mention with one, but his name starts with Philip. And, uh, and uh, he says, hey, you know what? I like Ohio State, and that broke my heart. I'm like, you can't. That's, no, not Ohio State. And, you know, we, we had some long, deep theological conversations about Ohio State and all that, you know. No, not really. Because it should break our hearts. We celebrate so much a sport, a team. Well, we ought to be inspiring our young people to be living for Jesus Christ. And how much time I think of my life have I wasted with my kids not pointing them to Jesus Christ? Moms, think about it. All your conversations uh, each day, every day, and uh, every week, every month, how much of it has it been, a conversation been about the things of God? When's the last time you knelt down and prayed with one of your children? Grandmas and grandpas with your grandchildren. See, it's not, it's not enough to just talk about our faith. We must live out our faith. And that leads me to, to the second thought about our faith. It wasn't just a memorable faith that these ladies had that Timothy has. But look at verse number 5 again. It says, when I call to remembrance, look at these, look at these next two words. The unfeigned faith that is in thee. This isn't just a, a faith that, uh, that is memorable, and Paul remembers uh, uh, Eunice and Lois and Timothy and their faith, and that's great, but you know what? It was an unfeigned faith. You know what that word unfeigned means? It means, uh, for, uh, for, at, at its root, it means real. It means genuine, not fake. These ladies and, and the Timothy, they have, an, they have an unfeigned faith. This is a, a faith that, is, that comes from the heart. And Lois and Eunice, they were, they were very real and genuine in living out their faith. Let me share with you just a couple of aspects of this faith that is real and genuine. I've said a couple of times now, passing down a godly heritage. I've, I've mentioned a couple of times now in uh, sh uh, uh, sharing your faith and passing your faith down to the next generation. Let me share with you kind of how that's supposed to be done, okay? A faith that is shared, baby, with the next generation does not, you ready for this, does not guarantee a place in heaven. You say, what? It doesn't. Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many times I bring my kids to church and I show them my faith. That does not mean that they're guaranteed a, a spot in heaven. It doesn't matter that, uh, uh, that as a pastor, and I've, I've had the unique privilege to, to baptize some of my children, just because I, I had the privilege to baptize my children, and maybe your children have been baptized, that doesn't mean that they're guaranteed a seat in heaven, a place in heaven. And just because you're, uh, you have your kids doing some, some good things, and they are respectful of others, and maybe they help people, it doesn't mean you're guaranteed that they're guaranteed a home in heaven. See, there's only one way to heaven, and it's not works. It's not necessarily even this faith that is passed down. The faith that is passed down we're talking about is the teachings. It's the, the training in Scripture. But you know what? Each young person, you ready for this? Each mom present here today, each grandma present here today, dad and grandpa, and each individual here today has to make a decision to trust Jesus by faith. 
And you know what? I, 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 I've had my kids in church, my wife and I, we decided before we were even married that, uh, that you know what, we were going to be in church every time the doors were open, God willing, and our children are going to go to church. And we just kind of settled it before we were even married. We settled, hey, this is where we're going to be. But you know what? It's been a great example, I think, to our kids, but there's, there's got to come a time in their life where this faith becomes their own and it becomes real. You see, this faith, this genuine faith, this faith from the heart, it begins at salvation. Salvation. And let me share with you just a couple of thoughts about salvation. You might be here and say, man, that's a, that's a big word, salvation. What, is, what does that mean? It, just, it simply means to be saved. And so the, uh, the, the challenge here that, that, Lo, that Lois and Eunice had was they, they had a desire to see Timothy uh, be saved and trust Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. And, uh, and, and it required uh, uh, them to, yes, live by faith, be that godly example. But you know what they taught Timothy? They taught Timothy something that is not popular in our world today. They taught Timothy, for all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. You know what I hear, hear a lot in this world? I hear a lot from people. I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty good person. I'm not that bad. <laughs> I haven't killed anybody. I, I, hear, I hear those statements a lot. But the Bible tells us, for all have sinned. And you know what? That's not popular in our world today to tell people that, that they have done wrong. One, somebody who takes something that is not their own is a what? A thief or a stealer, whatever you want to say. A thief. Somebody who commits adultery with somebody is a, an adulterer. And the, and the list goes on. It's sin. In several passages in Scripture here, you're in chapter number 3. Let me just show you a little bit about what sin looks like. Chapter 3 and verse number 1. Let me look at this list here. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3 and verse number 1, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. And, and here's what are, what are the indicators of perilous times. Here's some of the, the sin that will be celebrated and prevalent in our world today. For men shall be what? Lovers of their own selves. Let me tell you something. It says here in the last days, uh, uh, perilous times will come. I believe we're living in the last days because we are uh, lovers of ourselves. We carry, we carry these things around, and they got cameras on them, and what do we take? Well, maybe us older people don't take them as much. We take selfies. We love ourselves. We spend, think, think of how, how much time do we spend in front of a mirror? And I'm not saying don't spend in time in front of a mirror. I think we need to. But why do we do it? Because we love ourselves. Here in the last days, perilous times have come. Men will be lovers of themselves. It's an unhealthy love of selves. Look at what comes next. Covetous. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Blaspheming the name of God. I, uh, I remember uh, in the 90s, I don't know, and Jake, maybe you were, we were about the same age in the 90s. I don't know if you saw it. I, I saw a T-shirt that had a cross on it, and it said, This Bud's for you. And I get what they're trying to say, but they were using a slogan from a beer. I, that's, that's blasphemous. And, 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 you, and the things of this world and uh, taking the place of the Lord. Look at what comes next. This is pretty, pretty big here. How do we know we're in the last days? Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. What does that mean? It means we're full of sin. Continue, it says, without natural affection. And we see that in a tremendous way today through the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, and it's not, let me tell you something, that uh, les, le, lesbian, gay, transgender, that's not a lifestyle, that's sin. And that's not popular in our world today, but that's what God calls it, it's sin. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of, of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness. 
but denying the power thereof from such turn away. See that descriptor of the perilous times. Last days, I think we're in it. So when the Bible says, for all have sinned, I think we might be able to find some of our life in those verses. Have you ever disobeyed your parents? Moms, have your children ever disobeyed? Yep. And moms, let's be honest, we're not perfect either. So we are all, we are all sinners. The Bible tells us that, uh, that this sin, uh, uh, because of our sin, we, uh, we cannot measure up to God's standard of holiness because of this sin. For the wages of our sin, for the wages of sin is death. That's the consequences. The Bible continues and says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. How can Jesus offer eternal life? Because Jesus took your place. Jesus died for you. And this is the truth that, that Lois and Eunice shared with Timothy. Timothy, uh, you're, uh, you're, maybe, uh, you're a wonderful young man and we love you very much, but Timothy, you're a sinner. And because you're a sinner, uh, that means you're on your way to a, to a godless hell and uh, you, you need to trust Jesus as your Savior. Jesus is the way, the, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father uh, but by Him, the Scripture saying. And, and Timothy, if you, if you want a home in heaven, it's not because of what your grandma's doing. It's not because of her faith. Timothy, if you want a home in heaven, it's not because of my faith. Timothy, if you want a home in heaven, it's not because you're a good kid. If you want a home in heaven, you've got to trust Jesus as your personal Savior. And Romans tells us in Romans 10 and verse number 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And this is the message that Lois and Eunice, the Apostle Paul, shared with Timothy, the way of salvation. And let me just say this, moms. If, if you have not shared this way of salvation with your, with your children, I would encourage you to do it and do it today. We know also it wasn't just a faith unto salvation, but it was a faith that led to sanctification. A faith that led to sanctification and living a, uh, a, a new life. This real, this genuine faith. Romans chapter 1 and verse number 17 says, For therein is the righteousness of God uh, revealed from faith to faith, as, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Matthew, uh, Jesus said this in the book of Matthew, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. After salvation, uh, uh, God has a tremendous plan for your life, a tremendous purpose for your life. And, uh, man, we must be faithful to uh, reading the Scriptures, hearing the Scriptures taught so that we may learn how to be sanctified, how to live this life. How do we live for Jesus Christ after salvation? My wife and I are celebrating 20 years of marriage in a couple weeks. And I'll tell you this, my relationship with my wife is a lot different than it was 20 years ago. 21 years ago when we met. It's different. I'm not the same guy. She's not the same lady. We've, we've, we've grown, we've gotten to know each other better. We've spent time with each other. And you know what? Because of my relationship with my, my wife, uh, there are some things that, that, I, that I will not do. It's because, what do they say, the ball and chain? No. No. It's because I love my wife. So there are some places that I, that I will not go because I love my wife. There are some, some, some people that I, that I will not spend time with. Why? Because I hate those people? No, because I love my wife. There are some things that I, uh, there's some, some things that I, I don't say because I love my wife. And, and the list goes on. Because of my love for my wife, it's changed me in my response to her. And let me tell you this, if you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior this morning, your life ought to be changed 
and changing. What's happening in our world today, we just had a wonderful conference, a, a faith, family, and culture conference. If you were not able to make it out to services, I'd check out the, I would check out the services online. And uh, man, get your Bibles out and pay close attention and learn much. They were tremendously convicting. As I think, uh, as I think about uh, uh, even, uh, even this past week and uh, Mother's Day today and this sanctification process and, uh, and us changing and be molded in the image of our son, we are not as Christians to be becoming more like the world, but we are. We're to becoming more, be becoming more like Christ, not the world. And we become more like the world in, in, in almost every area of our life rather than becoming like Christ. It's evidenced in, in our music, in our movies, in our time spent, and where our money goes, and, and what we spend our time doing, and, and what we say in our speech, and where we hang out, and the list goes on. We, we are becoming more like the world rather than becoming like Christ. You see, Lois and Eunice, it wasn't just a, a, a faith of salvation, although that, I believe salvation is the most important decision that anybody will ever make. There was a faith unto sanctification where God was changing them. And I think Timothy saw the change. And they taught Timothy how to live for Jesus Christ. And then I want you to notice not, not just a faith of, unto salvation or a faith unto sanctification, but it was a faith that involved sharing. And this is probably maybe the most obvious point, this faith, sharing. What do they do? They taught. Paul encouraged, encouraged Timothy to continue what he had learned and been assured of. See, Deuteronomy tells us this, Deuteronomy chapter number 6, encouraging uh, parents to teach. And uh, verse number 4, the Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these things which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thy eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house, and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto his fathers to Abraham, to Isaac and Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. What, what's being mentioned here is parenting on purpose, raising your children uh, for the glory of God on purpose. If my kids like the Detroit Tigers and they don't love Jesus, I've failed. And they, if they don't have an, a knowledge of who Jesus is and a knowledge of the word of God, but man, they, they like the Detroit Lions, I've missed it as a parent. Yeah, I've missed it as a parent. If, if, if my kids know how to make their bed, fold their clothes, vacuum the floor, but they don't know how to tell somebody about Jesus Christ, I've failed as a parent. Who's supposed to teach your kids about how to lead somebody to the Lord? Well, that's the pastor's job. True. Well, that's the church's job. No, that's mom and dad's job. And, and, and I'll say this, how do we expect young people to, to live for the Lord when mom and dad won't? How do we expect young people to tell people about Jesus when they've never seen their mom and dad tell people about Jesus? How do we expect our young people uh, to tithe uh, and give, give back to the Lord what they've been blessed with when mom and dad don't give back to the Lord? How do we expect young people to be faithful to, to church when mom and dad aren't faithful to church? The list goes on. Man, we, we taught our kids how to walk. We taught them how to talk. We taught them how to swing a baseball bat. We taught them how to mow grass. We taught them how to use a chainsaw. We taught them how to wash dishes. The list goes on. But have we taught them the ways of the Lord? Have we taught them how to live for Jesus Christ? Moms, you've got such a tremendous responsibility along with dads to not just teach your young people how to survive and, and, and thrive in this life, but man, to teach them the ways of God. And then I'll close with this thought. 
How many, how many in here are somebody's child? Every hand better be up, otherwise we're, we've got some, some things to talk about. Okay. Everybody in here is somebody's child. So if you go back to Ch- 2 Timothy chapter 3, okay. In 2 Timothy chapter number 3, Paul tells Timothy in verse 14, but continue thou in what you've been taught. Is that what it says? Is that what it says? No. It says, continue thou in what thou hast learned. Okay? Let me give you an example. I am not a fan of geometry. And I'll be honest with you. Hey, you pick a subject in your mind. What subject did you dislike the most in school? I think most of us, we liked lunch. We liked recess. I get that. But it's the subject that you dislike the most. More times than not, more times than not, you know, I didn't like geometry. Didn't like, didn't like trigonometry and all those types of things. Wasn't a huge fan of chemistry and physics and all that kind of stuff. The teacher got up every day and taught. The teacher got up and prepared a lesson to teach. But you know what my responsibility was to do? To learn. To learn. And I'll, and I'll be honest with you, and some of you might identify with this, I've sat in some classes and I had a great view of the back of my eyelids. I fell asleep. I'll be honest with you, I sat in some classrooms that had some wonderful windows that showed outside, and I would have rather been on the playground than the classroom. And so while the teacher's up there waxing eloquent, I was not learning. I want to encourage everybody here. Let's be learners of God's word. Young people, you've got a mom and a dad that care about you. You've got a mom and dad that, uh, that are striving to live for Jesus Christ. And I'll be honest, no, no mom and dad's perfect. Man, learn from the example that's given. Paul encourages Timothy, hey, hey, continue what you've been taught. No. Continue in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. I want to encourage everybody here to be a person that desires to learn and to grow in Jesus Christ. Moms, your job's never done. Maybe this morning as we've mentioned some things and you thought, man, may, I have not maybe been the mom that I should be. Let me tell you something. I just said a mom's job is never done. Learn. And let's get better. Dads, maybe you say, man, I've been so focused on sports teams I've been so focused on money. I've been so focused on hobbies. I've been so focused on you fill in the blank that I've failed in teaching my young men and my young ladies about Jesus Christ. Hey, it's not too late. It's not too late to, to make this change. It's not too late to draw closer to the Lord. It's not too late to, to ask the Lord for wisdom and, and, and teaching and training your young people in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Don't quit. Don't give up. Hey, let's step up. And let's be the moms and dads that God would have us to be, the grandmas and grandpas that God would have us to be. And let's refocus our lives upon Jesus Christ. Hey, it's not just just lip service. Man, I, I live by faith. Where's the proof? Are we living by faith? Are we being that proper example to those in our life. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time together once again in your word. I thank you for moms. So, such a tremendous responsibility.
to raise young people to bring honor and glory to you. God, my prayer is that, that in my life, and there may be some that could identify this with this, God, in my life, I've missed the boat in some areas. I've missed the boat some times in my life. God, I don't desire to miss the boat. God, help me help your people to see the, uh, the seriousness of this responsibility of raising our young people. And God, may we raise our young people up in the faith and nurture and admonition of the Lord. And may we be that example of a Christ-like believer. And God, it's foolish of me to expect spirituality and Christ-likeness from my young people when I am not that myself. God, forgive me. God, help me to do better. Help your people. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This morning I'm going to ask if you would to stand with me. And I don't know maybe the area <coughs> of your life in which God has sp- spoken to you. But if the Holy Spirit uh, spoke to you this morning, I'm going to encourage you to respond to the Word of God. Maybe it's by taking a seat where you're at. Maybe it's coming forward and kneeling at, at an altar. We've been given such a short time with our young people, with your grandchildren. Let's not waste it. Hey, let's step it up. Hey, let's look to the Lord. Let's be people that just uh, don't claim to have faith, but let's live by faith in Jesus Christ alone. As the instrumentalists begin to play, let's respond to God's word this morning. I don't know how, how God's leading, but you respond as the instrumentalists play. As the ladies continue to play, let me ask you a question. If you were to die today, where would you spend an eternity? If you never trusted Christ as your Savior, let me tell you where you'll spend an eternity. It'll be in a place called hell, separated from God in eternal torment. If you never trusted Christ, let me tell you, that is not the place that Jesus wants you to be. It's not where I want you to be. It's not where anybody in this church building wants you to be. The Bible tells us for the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus told his disciples this, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again. Jesus is preparing heaven for you. Have you trusted him? The Bible tells us, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That word whosoever, that means anybody can be saved. Has there been a time in your life where you've trusted Jesus Christ? It changes your destination. To not know Christ is to choose hell. To trust Christ as your Savior is to choose heaven. It's a choice you must make. Doesn't matter how often you've come to church. Doesn't matter how often mom and dad brought you to church. Doesn't matter that your mom and dad brought you to church or not. You've got to make the decision yourself to trust Christ. This verse, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. You can say, I'd like to trust Christ as my Savior this morning. Can I see your hand for just a moment? Hey, I've never trusted Christ, but I'd like to. Can I see your hand? I won't point you out, won't embarrass you. Just pray for you. Anybody at all? Hey, I don't know Jesus as my Savior but I'd like to know him. Anybody at all? Thank you. See that hand. Anybody else? Hey, I don't know Jesus, but I'd like to. If 
you've raised your hand, I'm going to ask you to do something, not right now. At the end of the service, if you don't know for sure where you're spending eternity, I'll be in the back, and I'd love nothing more than to take the Bible or have somebody take the Bible and show you how you can know for sure that Jesus is your Savior. I hope that you allow me the opportunity, if you don't know Christ, to trust Him. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. God, thank you so much for working in our hearts. God, thank you for the faith that has been passed down. God, I pray it's been a faith unto salvation. If there is one here that still does not know for sure that Jesus is their Savior, God, would you save them today? And God, for the believer here, God, help us to live that holy, sanctified, set-apart life for your honor and glory. And God, specifically, I, th I think of moms. God, that there may have stepped on some open-toed heels this morning. But God, I pray that you'd help moms to fall more in love with you and live on purpose the Christ-like life, dads included. And God, we're all learners. We all ought to be learners. Help us to never get to the point to where we are unteachable. May we always have a desire to learn the truth of your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. you may be seated. I'm going to ask our men if they would to come. We're going to receive our offering here this morning. And I would encourage you to continue to give as God has blessed. Thank you so much for your faithfulness and giving. Thank you for the wonderful gift uh, given it to our evangelists this week as well. And uh, just some powerful services. Let me encourage you. Uh, if you were not able to make it out for services, hey, get back online and check out those services. Uh, those messages will challenge your heart and challenge your life. If you're our guest with us today, as that offering plate comes by, uh, be sure and put that connection card in the offering plate when it comes by. Jerry, would you ask the Lord's blessing on the offering?
Amen. Thank you, Ruth. Let me remind about a couple of events really quick here before you leave. Uh, young adults, there's a spring retreat, uh, young adult retreat out at camp this coming weekend, 17th and 18th. If you have not signed up and plan on being there, uh, be sure and check out the Kobiak website. If you've got any questions about it, you can probably touch base with Ben. He might be able to hook you up with some answers. Uh, and that'll be this weekend. It'll be a wonderful time of fellowship. Uh, then next Sunday night, we're going to have a business meeting. Uh, we'll talk about we're looking at resurfacing the, um, uh, the parking lot. And we've got several quotes in. It's looking like it's going to be about $7,000 uh, to seal it, to stripe it. And so there'll be a new traffic pattern, kind of new parking spots. And so uh, uh, we'll be talking, we'll give you kind of that plan a little bit tonight of what that parking uh, pattern will look like. And uh, you'll be able to, to uh, think about that and ruminate on it. We'll vote on that on, next, on the 19th, next Sunday night. I'm excited about that. And then I want to why don't you put this on your schedule. Wednesday, May 27th, 22nd, Ronnie Ladrillo, our missionary to the Philippines, uh, is going to be with us. I don't think he's been here since the original time. Is that about right, the Ladrillos? Is it, well, he's here the one time. Is that it? Okay. Okay. He hasn't been here in... A while so things have changed for him he's married got kids and all of that so his whole family's with him and so come on out the 22nd we'll see what God is uh, God is doing uh, uh, doing in the, uh, his ministry in the Philippines and so please join us for that uh, and then also Sunday June 9th uh, we're going to be celebrating our graduates here at Calvary Baptist we've got five young people that are graduating and we want to recognize them all right let's stand together we'll be dismissed in a word of prayer there are a couple sign-up sheets in the back be sure and check them out uh, on your way out for our Memorial Day picnic and excited about that. Moms, there's a gift on the table out in the back there. Be sure and grab one. Uh, and if you've got a mom, somebody, a mom that you're connected with, I think we've got enough where you can grab one as well for, uh, for a mom, your mom if she's not able to be here uh, this afternoon or this morning. All right, let's bow for prayer. We'll be dismissed. Lord willing, we'll see you tonight and no choir practice uh, uh, tonight either. Uh, Stephen, would you ask the Lord's blessing as we dismiss?